You say there are seven signs mm -hmm. of narcissism and you're also going to tell us how to spot them. Mm -hmm. uh, let's just go one, through them one mm -hmm. by one. Yeah. What's the first one? So the first one's lack of empathy. Okay. And that's a defining characteristic. Uh, that's a defining characteristic of narcissism. In fact, if I see that somebody has really well-preserved empathy, I'm like, nah, it's not even happening. So that, that to me almost is the requirement. It's the bedrock of this pattern. The second is entitlement. Entitlement is that sense is that, that somehow someone is, should deserve special treatment even if it's to the detriment of other people, that somehow they are different than everyone else. Again, sort of special by dint of their, their existence. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the third is grandiosity. It's sort of an unrealistic assessment of one's capacity or abilities, or they talk about a grandiose world that they don't even live in, the things that they may someday do. You know, someday I'm going to climb Mount Everest. So they talk about it as though it's something they're actively doing or have already done. So it's, it is a... It is, again, a very unrealistic, almost fantasy-like version of the world. They'll often talk about having one day the greatest love affair or the greatest love story or the greatest wedding or the greatest career. It's, everything is just bigger and larger than life. Number four is superficiality. There's a, a very vapid quality to narcissism. They're really only concerned about appearances, how a person looks, um, what a person owns, where they live, what they drive, what they carry, the shoes on their feet. It's very, very superficial to the detriment of other characteristics. Somebody out there might say, oh, but I love fashion, but they're a very sweet, kind person. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about superficiality with absolutely no depth behind it or judging people solely on superficial um, characteristics mm -hmm. and quality. Mm -hmm. Number five is chronic seeking of admiration or validation. It's the constant need to be, get, be receiving praise, recognition, and nowadays that's really amped up because of social media, that they have to get likes and they have to get lots of traction on their social media page and they need lots of followers and all of that. So it's that constant need, but it, it never stops. If you're even close to them, like you, you're their child or you're their partner, you have to constantly be telling them how wonderful they are and how great they are and way beyond the, the thing that they've done. It's almost a nuisance to get a gift from a narcissist because you have to thank them for it so many oh times it would have been gosh. easier to buy it yourself. Um, number six is their tendency to rage. They don't, they don't have good command of their emotions. They tend to be all over the map. And the one emotion they tend to manifest the most often is uncontrolled rage. That's often because they're so frustrated and they're so insecure and they don't have good ways of dealing with their feelings. So it's not unusual for them to just come out. When things don't go their way, they don't have any tolerance for frustration. So you'll see a lot of rage that comes out. And number seven, I'd really say, is arrogance. It's, um, I'm better than you. And, and, and in some ways, that sort of draws from the grandiosity, it draws from the entitlement, but it can come off as a snobbery, as a dismissiveness, as a devaluation, as an invalidation of other people, just sort of like sweeping them away. And so those are some of the seven key character, characteristics. In my book, I actually lay out what I call 31 characteristics. Oh. It's like, I think it's a lot more than just the seven, and it takes in a lot more territory. Jealousy, envy getting pleasure out of other people's misery, um, lying, cheating, um, you know, things all, a lot of really negative interpersonal patterns. People who are narcissistic often engage in projection. They make their faults and flaws yours. Like, I didn't say that, I didn't do that. You did. They'll accuse you of something they did and they'll be like, you'll, you'll often be quite confused. They engage in dynamics like gaslighting where they question your reality and make you feel like you're literally losing your mind. Like that never, ha they'll say things like that never happened. And you'll be like, but it did, but it did. And then you'll start questioning yourself. Did that happen? Right. And people who spend enough time with narcissists find themselves plagued with self-doubt because narcissists so question their, oh, so often question their reality. So with those seven, do they have to have all seven of those? You know, the DSM has a list of nine, which takes in most of those. You only mm -hmm. need five of the nine, plus this idea that thing, life isn't going well, that right. distress, to get it in the DSM. I often, I'm actually a little more generous. I say like, you need to have like, if you have all, if you have five of those seven, you're in trouble, but the empath, the lack of empathy is the requirement. Yeah. To me, all, everything, so it's like that, plus four or five others, and mm, not so And a uh, huge takeaway for me was in our last episode mm -hmm. when you talk about empathy and how yeah. it related to raising your kids. So if you haven't seen that episode, make sure you go back one and take a look there because that was just absolutely, for me, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, how quickly, if I'm just at a party and I meet people, can I 
find out if someone's a narcissist. I mean, I'm a pro and I'm in and out in 15 seconds. Like I got 15 this. Like, seconds. I'm, I got this. Like I, before I've even wait, gotten wait, to the so, second so fight of the session, pretzel. Like, our session is going to be 15 yeah, exactly. seconds. <laughs> you can, you know what he said, party, it's almost easier, right? Because, I know it's kind of mean. I probably like cast out a few. But I, it might take me longer. Some people, you, if they're a narcissist, you're going to be able to tell quickly. Sometimes it takes you a little longer if it's a bit more subtle or covert or something like that. But it can happen pretty quickly. You know, watch the back and forth of the conversation. Is there a genuine curiousness about you? Like, do you, do you walk up to them and say, hi, nice to meet you, I'm Romani, and you'll say, hi, I'm Kyle, and then it's the Kyle show. And by the time this conversation is done, there's no sense of anything about me and not even an opportunity for me to have offered that. Uh, you know, it also might be how they conduct themselves in that. Like, do they just keep talking about themselves and only in these sort of unrealistically glowing terms? Do they almost seem too, but that the other extreme, they also may be a little bit too slick and mm -hmm. too smooth. Like, you know, maybe not like they're coming on to you, but like, it's just almost too charming. Yeah. I find charming people terrifying. Because I know that's often like the soft sign that psychopathy or narcissism is coming around the corner. So charming people, I actually like uncharming people. Like the more socially awkward you are, the more I'm like, this could be a real, sure <laughs> a thing. real person. Like, this is great. Yeah. Wonderful. Sign me up. So if I meet somebody and I suspect they're a narcissist because they're only talking about themselves, they're not interested in me mm -hmm. at all, they're very grandiose in their, uh, the content that mm -hmm. they're putting out there, are there any questions I could ask them that could give me some instant feedback? You know, what you can do is ask them something that has more, that pulls them away from talking about their work. Like, let's say they're talking, bragging about work, work, work. They're sort of like only talking about one thing. Try to change it to something else. Like, what are the things that bring you joy? Like, really ask them like a feely question. Mm -hmm. And if they're like, blah, 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 like they just sort of like become like, huh? Feeling? I'm going to go get another martini. Like they run away. That's probably a sign. Like if you, I, it's sort of a game for me at a party. If I think I've met a narcissist, I'll say, can you tell me about a little bit about your inner world? Yeah. Because I know what you do now. And the, the, I'll often get people who look at me like I just, I'm speaking in tongues. And they'll often say, I see someone over there. I got to go. And they'll often really cut the conversation. <laughs> people are going to be so nervous when they meet you at a party yeah. now. They're oh, like, yeah, hey, by yeah. the way, I'm not yeah, a narcissist. I, like, I saw yeah, you on yeah. Metzger. Like, like, I'm out. I'm not um, that's also a, a show I would definitely watch. You uh, with a hidden camera just meeting people. At a party. Yeah. yeah. In, in LA, it's actually, it's, it's blood sport here. because oh it's, like, it's you can cut, fishing it's like, with dynamite Well, it's like here. going, it's like seashell collecting. Yeah. By the end of a party, you've got like enough... You've got I mean, it really, I know we joke about how narcissistic LA is, but it really is true. It really is true. Yeah, we live here, we it. work here. It's a mother's insanity. Ship. It really is. Yeah. But here's one thing that you want to be, I mean, again, I don't want people dismissing people in like the first 15 seconds they sure. meet them. Let's say someone does talk about themselves a lot. The other thing you do want to be mindful of is they may be socially anxious. So they may have trouble kind of taking and rolling with it. That's why I'm saying if you could slow the conversation down, maybe even make it about something that's happening around you, like something very sweet, like something they, you know, they're, they're drinking or something special they may be wearing, with it, but making them make it more special, not like, well, this is the designer label, mm -hmm. but try to make it about the moment, what's personal, and see where they can go with it to share a little of yourself. Also, start talking about yourself a little. They've done their whole dog and pony show. See what happens when you start talking about yourself. If they glaze over or they start using their phone at that point, not a good sign. If I do find myself in a situation where I'm in a relationship, whether it's romantic or otherwise, with a narcissist, mm -hmm. what can I do? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you know, here, it is, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be painful. If you really, and by the time a lot of people detect these patterns, it's been years sometimes. Mm. Um, if we're lucky, they don't have kids together because that can start getting messy if the relationship goes south because a custody battle with a narcissist is, is it's war. It's, it's one of the most painful things I've ever witnessed. If you sense that that's where things are going, you need to get yourself into therapy right away and you want to get the couple into therapy. The challenge with couples therapy with a narcissist is unless you've got one very skilled therapist, that narcissist can really play the therapist. Yeah, and I've seen that happen many, many times. You want to be really, really careful. You How do they play the therapist? They win them over, they charm them. And sometimes the narcissist is sort of the more materially successful or the more successful seeming partner. And they'll kind of, again, they'll, they'll charm them. 
they'll charm them. You have to be somebody who just dislikes charm to really not be charmed, right? So they'll really play them and work them and, and, and flatter them. And narcissists actually are quite good at sort of sniffing out how to validate another person because they are they need it so much they're really good at dispensing it when they need to wow. so they can really work the game but it's important you get therapy you consider getting yourselves into therapy you pay attention to the patterns and you really have to do some hard looks into the mirror on if if this is as good as it's ever going to get which is probably the case mm -hmm. can you live with this forever mm. That's the question. And if it's if it you don't like that, then you've got one of two paths. Either you've got to adjust your expectations to this is how it's always going to be, or you got to get out. Well, and those two paths is what we will be discussing in our next episode of this fascinating series all about narcissism. Mm -hmm.